All right, next in our study of rational expressions, we're going to look at complex fractions. And complex fractions are kind of just combining everything we've done so far. So you're going to be dividing fractions, but also adding and subtracting them. So all of it together at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and just do some examples so we can see how this works. So we have something on top divided by something on bottom. Before we can do anything else, we have to be able to add these fractions together. And we know that when we add or subtract fractions, we have to have a common denominator. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the fractions on the top or the bottom that I can see being added or subtracted, and I'm going to get a common denominator between those two. So the common denominator between these two fractions is a 2 and an x. 2x. And so I'm going to go ahead and fix each of them. So 11 over x needs to multiply by 2 over 2 so that it can have that common denominator. 3 over 2 needs to multiply by x over x so it can have that common denominator. All right, so now I can go ahead and take the top and write it over 2x. I have 11 times 2 is 22 plus... 3x, and that's divided by 5 over 2. Now at this point, I can say, okay, that's a fraction divided by a fraction. So now I can go ahead and keep it, change it, flip it. So I'm going to say 22 plus 3x over 2x, change it to a multiplication problem, and then flip the bottom, 2 over 5. So when I look at this, I'm thinking tops and bottoms can cancel. I need to change the order of things so that they're in the correct order. Um, and then once I change the order and make them in the correct order and factor, then I can see if there's any more canceling that can be done. So I can see that this should definitely be written differently. 3x plus 22 is better. But even when I change the order of it, you can't factor that. And so I'm just going to leave that. But I can't see that this 2 and this 2 are going to cancel. So on the top, I'm going to be left with 3x plus 22. On the bottom, I'm going to be left with x times 5, which is 5x. And so I'm done. So it's exactly what you've done before. It's just kind of like having two sets of um, steps to do instead of just one step. All right, next we're going to look at 5x over 3 plus x over x plus 1 divided by 2. Now, it won't always be like this. I've given you two examples where it's one fraction plus another divided by something, but it could be minus, and it could be that the two fractions are on the bottom, not the top. So, But we're going to start the same way we did with the other one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and find my common denominator. So between 3 and an x plus 1, I'm just going to need both of those. So I need a 3, kind of like the GCF or the factor in front, and then I need the parentheses. So for the first one, I'm going to have 5x over 3, and I need an x plus 1 on the top and an x plus 1 on the bottom. And then for the second one, I have the x plus 1, but I need the 3. And I'm going to go ahead and take this 2 on the bottom. I'm going to write it as a 1, 2 over 1, um, because anytime I have a whole number and I want to write it as a fraction, I can do that as long as I put a 1 underneath it. Okay, so on the top, I have 5x squared plus 5x, and this is over 3 times x plus 1. And I have plus, this is 3x, and that's all divided by 2 over 1. So now I have a fraction, right? This is a fraction over another fraction. And now I'm going to say this is a division problem. And so I'm going to do keep it, change it, flip it. So I've got 5x squared plus 8x. Keep it, change it, flip it. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and see if I can factor anything, see if anything will cancel. So I have a GCF of X on the top. And I can see that nothing is going to cancel, and so I'm just going to write my leftover. So I have x times 5x plus 8. On the bottom I have a 3 and a 2, so that's going to give me a 6, and an x plus 1. And I'm all done. Okay, one last example problem. I have a divided by 5 over a minus 25 over a minus 3. So this time the two fractions that are being added or subtracted are on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and look at those and get my common denominator. So I have an a that's all by itself, but I also have an a minus 3. So I'm going to need to have both of those. So for the top of the fraction, I'm going to go ahead and leave some space to have that A. And it's like a whole number, so I'm going to put a 1 underneath it. So A over 1. Okay. On the bottom, I have 5 over A. So it has the piece A, but it doesn't have the A minus 3. So that's what I'm going to multiply on the top and the bottom. Minus. 25 over a minus 3, and this one has the a minus 3 but doesn't have the a, so I'm going to put that on top and on bottom. So I have a over 1, and then on the bottom I have that common denominator of a times a minus 3 now. So this is 5a minus 15. And then this is minus 25a. Now I can go ahead and I can do keep it, change it, flip it. So keep it, change it, flip it. And then I'll go ahead and just write it the way it is right now. So if I look at my second fraction, I have some like terms I can combine together. So a and negative 25a makes negative 20a. And then we have the negative 15. And so that can be factored. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a negative 5. And then that leaves me with 4a plus 3. And even though we factored it, I don't see anything that can cancel. These a's cannot cancel because they're both on the top. The parentheses can't cancel because they're not identical. And so that leaves me with a squared times a minus 3 divided by negative 5 times 4a plus 3. So when we do these problems, the big process that we have to remember is to get a common denominator with our two fractions that are added or subtracted um, so that we can rewrite the problem as a division problem. And then we do keep change flip and then do the problem like we've learned how to do previously in the unit.